Saints, um, earlier today, I did a video talking about um, the feral beast and how it's not healthy and it's not, it's a sin, you know, because you're not taking care of the uh, temple of God. The book of Corinthians says that you have to glorify your body in Christ. Um, it doesn't only mean taking care of your body physically and spiritually and mentally. It means living for the Lord so that one day when you make the rapture, you can be glorified like Jesus was. In other words, being changed in an instant. Um, that goes with regarding taking care of the temple. Now, I did mention about if you are on medic. Let's say if you are obese and one of the things that causes your obesity is you're taking medication that causes weight gain. You can ask your doctors to change that medication where it doesn't cause any weight gain. And in fact, if anything, just forget about the medication. Go all natural. Trust God to heal you and just diet and eat right. Okay, so you can ask your doctors to actually take you off that medication. If he changes it, to change it to something natural that doesn't have any chemicals, that doesn't involve any medication at all, to change you to like a natural regimen. Um, for example, uh, they can hire a nutritionist for you to determine... A nutritionist led by the Holy Spirit, that is, to determine what foods you can eat to um, cause you to lose weight. And also hire like a trainer um, to get you on some type of exercise regimen to help you lose weight as well. Because you can't just eat right and not, lose, and not exercise. You need both of them hand in hand to lose weight. Most importantly, you need Jesus Christ to, do, to move this all for you in a mighty way because only Jesus can heal. Amen. Um, so if you're on any type of medication for weight loss, just get off of it and ask them to put you on a natural regimen, you know, for healthy foods to eat and to recommend a trainer that can put you on an exercise regimen to help you lose weight. You know, um, if you have a food addiction, you need to get off that because, again, I already explained what the dangers are in the first video. Um, I also want to explain to you, in the videos, I just did it today, just look at today's date, it's regarding, it's, I think it says to all obese people, something like that. Um, you also want to consider, um, you might say, well, people have a medical condition, thyroid condition, you know what, I don't care about what science says because I don't trust science. And I really don't believe people have a thyroid condition that causes them to gain weight. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it sounds stupid if you think about it. It sounds almost like evolution. And it sounds like that. It doesn't make any sense. Because I've known people that so-called have a thyroid condition and they change their diet by eating right and um, exercising. And they lost the weight and never gained it back because they kept the weight off. They, first of all, they trusted Jesus Christ to help them, and secondly, they kept the weight off because of God, by taking care of themselves and exercising right. So, I believe that that's a demonic entity behind that. And the reason why I say that is because I believe that that so-called thyroid condition, okay, like I said, is actually a demon of weight gain. And that demon of weight gain, okay, is being controlled by gluttony. That individual eats a lot, and they know it. They say that people with a thyroid condition, if they eat a little bit, they gain a lot of weight. That's what they say. Um, I'm here to tell you that it is not true. You can disagree. That is your problem. It doesn't make any sense for a person to gain weight just by eating fries. The person can gain, has to gain that much kind of weight. The person would have to gain... The person, let me say it step back for a minute. A person that gains that kind of weight that quick has to have a history of eating badly for years. If you don't take care of your body and you drop in even one fry in your body, you're going to gain weight because there's a lot of fat and calories in one fry that you need to know about. One single fry. You get at McDonald's, a whole a small fry thing, a small uh, fry size at McDonald's is over a thousand calories. A burger... The beef alone is 1,100 calories. That's not even taking into consideration the bread, where it's about a 200 calories a piece. It doesn't take into consideration the other stuff they put on there, like ketchup and mustard. 
So it's not about thyroid condition. I believe there's a demonic entity behind it. In fact, I know there is. I delivered someone recently from that, and she's doing quite well. That demonic entity of weight gain, that is behind the thyroid. It's a spirit of deception. It's weight gain. It's behind the thyroid condition. It actually manifested in her, and it was cast out. She weighed 357 pounds. She looks fantastic. I mean, she's down, okay? I've been working with this woman for months. The demon was cast out, and guess what? Before that, she gained weight easily. Now the weight's pouring off her, and this woman is in her 40s. So don't sit there and tell me that thyroid condition is actually true, because it's not. I don't trust what science says. I also want to address another fact with you guys. God talks about taking care of the temple. Do you know that if you that when you don't take care of your body, you defile the temple? The book of Corinthians, it's all over scripture too, talks about abusing, abusers of the body. You know what that means? That means drug addicts, those that um, eat a lot, those that drink a lot, those that have some kind of an addiction, you're abusing the body. Even if you're a coffee addict, you're abusing the body. I used to say I was a coffee addict. Jesus Christ freed me from that. I'm not saying drinking coffee is bad. There's actually a lot of health benefits to it. Okay? There's health benefits to it. But it is not healthy to be addicted to any one thing. You know what? The only addiction that's healthy is being addicted to Jesus Christ. Being addicted to righteousness. Being addicted to doing righteous deeds. That's a righteous addiction. That's a good addiction. As far as um, unrighteous addictions, drugs, alcohol, food, even coffee and drinking soda. If you, if you drink coffee, you drink it at large amounts. I mean by pots. Um, when I say large amounts, I mean, I mean, I drink coffee. Okay. When I say drinking coffee, I mean literally not eating any food, not eating anything, not drinking anything, just drinking coffee. Let's say if you go up to go to the you get up to go to the bathroom. Okay? In the middle of the night. You go you get up and you go to the bathroom. Then you start making a pot of coffee. Let's say you're home. You're making pots of coffee one after the other at least ten to twelve or more. Maybe, now I'm going to say, let me back that number up. I'm going to say, because a moderate drinker would make at least, if you got if you got several people living in the house that drink coffee, obviously you're going to probably make, depends, maybe you're going to make seven pots, eight pots. Like I, I have people living in my house, and my spouse drinks coffee. We probably make like, and our coffee pot is really small. It's like this small. It's like small. It's like the size of a, a, a small saucer, a pot, a small pot. So naturally, you know, we make like eight to ten pots a day because it's a small, small coffee pot. It only supports like probably two small cups of coffee. So he and I drink coffee between us probably five cups a day, five small cups. So we're moderate drinkers. I'm not going to say don't drink coffee and disregard it because it's... It's not a harmful habit. I'm just saying don't do it in levels that it's unhealthy for you. Like like drinking 20 to 30 pots a day. There's a good number. 20, 30 pots, pots a day. When I say 20 to 30 pots a day, I mean like large pots. There are people that do that. You get a large pot of coffee that supports at least one 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 uh, pot would, would accommodate eight cups. You have people out there that would make anywhere from 20 to 30 pots. And there's only two people living in a house. So it depends on how many people you have living in a house that drink coffee. Um, and how many people that drink coffee altogether. Because if you have four people that drink coffee, three to four cups a day. Okay. Or you'll probably end up going through maybe four large pots. Maybe five large pots. Or if you have 10 people in the house that drink coffee, 4 cups a day, you go through 10 large pots. So it depends on the size. But yeah, I know people that are a couple people that live in a house. They both drink coffee. 
and they literally go through the um, at least I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a number that can be unhealthy because in reality, how many cups of coffee you drink that becomes that addicting? It becomes it, when it gets you drink it so much, it gets to the point that it's unhealthy and it's very addictive. It depends on how many people are in the house, how often do they drink, and obviously how many pots that causes you to go through. So like I said, if you have two people in the house and the size of the pot, okay, you have a coffee pot that accommodates two cups, four cups. My coffee pot accommodates two cups. So naturally, I believe we probably go through about between the two of us, we drink anywhere between four to five cups a day, small cups. So that's moderate. That's like 10 pots. 10 pots for me and my family, my home, but consider the fact that that pot supports only two cups. That's it. So, and it's only the two of us that drink coffee. So, but I know situations where you have people that is two of them and they drink anywhere between 20 to 30 cups of coffee a day each. So you figure they go through at least eight large pots of coffee a day between the two of them. And remember, the one pot of coffee being able to accommodate up to eight small cups. That is an unhealthy level. I'm a moderate drinker, but going to that extreme that I just explained to you, that's unhealthy. That's defiling the temple of God. This is something the Lord just recently revealed to me. I thought I had an addiction to coffee. At one time, I did. I was worse than what I was now. You know, um, I have a thermostat. And... In my kind of work, like I'm a dispatcher, sometimes overnight I have to stay up to make it through my shift because I don't work overnight. In situations like that, I would drink coffee to stay up. Or if I've had a night where I've slept only a couple of hours and I need to make it through the day, you got that right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink a little bit of extra coffee. What I'm explaining to you about a coffee addict, so if it's situations like that, you're okay. But I'm explaining to you about a coffee addict is they literally don't eat food, don't drink anything else. All they do is drink coffee 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a coffee addict. And the large pots. You could have one person that will keep putting on a pot that has eight cups in it. Maybe four cups in it. But it's still too much for one person. And that's all they make. They drink coffee 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Now let's say they may eat food. But they don't drink water. They don't drink anything else but coffee 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, nonstop. That's an addiction. That's what an addiction is. Same thing with alcohol. You drink alcohol 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's an addiction. Same thing with smoking cigarettes. Now... Should you be smoking cigarettes, period, point blank? No. Should you be drinking alcohol at all? No. Can you drink coffee in moderate levels? That's okay. The principality of addiction, okay, is if you have a serious addiction, like sinning is a sm uh, smoking is a sin, drinking alcohol is a sin, doing drugs is a sin, overeating, not taking care of yourself is a sin. There are certain types of addictions that are not a sin. And I've explained that to you. Righteous addictions in God are not a sin. Coffee, I drink coffee. Okay? If you do not drink coffee in a way that is becoming addictive, that is not a sin. Same thing for tea. If you drink it in moderation. But alcohol, the reason why I say that would be a sin is because alcohol, alcoholic beverages can harm the body. And when I say they can harm the body, everyone knows that alcohol has beverages. I mean, has alcohol can mess your body up, your kidneys, your liver, your name. It. it depletes your blood cells, your white blood cells, and your brain cells. Drugs does that even worse than that. Overeating can mess your body up as well. 
Food is another thing. You can eat food, but as long as you're doing it in moderation in a way that's healthy, and you're eating healthy food and righteous food, that is not an addiction. But if you're overeating in food, any kind of food, regardless of what it is, and you're overeating too much, it's becoming a danger, that is an addiction and it's unhealthy and that's defiling the temple. Now, I hope I explained this right. You can defile the temple even if you say, you know, not only physically, but spiritually and mentally. So if you think in your heart that you look ugly or that you're overweight or that you don't look good or something negative about yourself, you're defiling the temple spiritually and you are actually cursing yourself. Because if you're saying that you look fat, you are summoning a spirit of gluttony and a spirit of weight gain indirectly. If you're saying that you're ugly, you're summoning a spirit of hideousness. Any kind of spirit of hideousness that can cause you to even do things to yourself. If you're saying anything negative about you, you can summon a demonic spirit according to what you're saying indirectly. Therefore, you must be careful what you say. Remember that the spiritual laws apply. You think it in your heart. There's a partial strong hold open. As far as God is concerned, you committed that sin. I'm just bringing this to your attention because I never spoke about addiction, the spirit of addiction. Righteous addiction, you could be addicted to serving Jesus Christ. Be on fire for God like the prophets of old were, the righteous prophets of old and the righteous saints of old. You can be addicted to helping people in the name of Jesus Christ. That is not bad sin. I mean, I'm sorry, Father God. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord, know what I meant to say. That is not a bad addiction. You could be addicted to doing righteous deeds in Jesus' name. That's righteous addiction. So what I'm revealing to you is the spirit of righteous addiction and the spirit of unrighteous addiction. Explaining to you what defiling the temple means that you need to know, you need to listen to. And if you are a coffee drinker like myself, drink in moderation, but don't drink to the point that it's going to harm you because the harmful effects of drinking too much coffee, okay, um, can cause high blood pressure. And um, it can cause your heart to beat very fast. So if you are a heart patient and you have a bad heart condition or if you have asthma or any type of health health ailment, you can be put in serious danger. So that's the harmful effects of drinking coffee at a very unhealthy rate. If you're worried about how to manage a problem you have, ask God for help. If it's coffee, ask God for self-control and drinking it in moderation. Food, ask God for help so it doesn't become an addiction. To eat right, healthy, good portions that are not dangerous levels. If you are overweight, morbidly obese, you need to take that fat off. I'm saying this out of love and with kindness because you are in serious danger. I'm dealing with a few cases right now. And yes, there's spirits of weight gain and gluttony behind this and various other spirits of addiction. And every one of them has serious health problems ranging from diabetes to sleep apnea to heart problems to high blood pressure, high sugar, high cholesterol, you name it. If you need help in losing weight, staying healthy, I lost over 100 pounds. I'm always happy to share my knowledge with you.